Yes, what's happening everyone? Welcome back to GEA Fan TV. I'm not gonna lie lads, it has been a while. It's been about a month since we last uploaded on this channel. What can I say? It's been busy. I mean, since Dublin won the All-Ireland every weekend unfortunately. See, the weekends is normally when I make these videos. The weekends is normally when I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna make a video, a GEA video. Um, but unfortunately the last couple of weekends have just resulted in me on the piss, me on the beer. Endless amounts of Coronas, Guinnesses, vodkas, whiskies. It's been endless, unfortunately. But nonetheless, lads, I am back. Yeah, I guess I'll just do the videos on weekdays because, uh, you know, we're working on all that. Don't think I can quite go out on the piss on a weekday. Although, there is that place just up the road that just, no, we won't go there. We won't do that, we won't do that. So yes, lads, every week from now on, we are gonna be talking about all the latest news in the GEA. I do have a couple of other videos planned as well. Uh, to be honest, I've actually had those videos planned for about a month, so um, yeah, I should probably get on them. But nonetheless, we are here to talk about the latest news, and I know it's been a while, obviously, since that all Ireland final. I mean, a lot's happened. There's been managerial changes. There's been the Footballer of the Year that's been announced. There's been the All-Star nominations. There's been the Hurler of the Year. There's been huge club action. So yeah, we'll just talk about what's kind of relevant really in the past week or so. Yeah, guys, Stephen Cluxton, Footballer of the Year. I'm absolutely delighted. Obviously, as a Dublin fan myself, this was something that I really wanted to see happen. I mean, Stephen Cluxton has been you know, he's just been irreplaceable in this Dublin team. He has been the, you know, when anyone thinks of Dublin, you think of Stephen Cluxton. You think of the way he has changed Gaelic football in, you know, not just from his saves, but from his, his kicking out. Um, you know, the way Dublin position themselves at times from Stephen Cluxton's kickouts. The way that teams almost set themselves up against Stephen Cluxton's kickouts to really try and take advantage and neutralise what he is doing and I feel like the work he's done outside of the GA as well he's had a heavy presence there and you know Stephen Cluxton has been he's been an idol really you know I think when we we live in a world where you know a lot of the idols in this country get huge recognition um, and rightly so rightly and wrongly in many ways but I look at Stephen Cluxton and I look at him and I think when people think of Stephen Cluxton they just think of him on the pitch they don't think of anything outside of Gaelic football, they don't think of him in any other way, and I feel like he's been an absolute role model to not just people from Dublin, but from every, you know, all over Ireland. For anyone who's not just interested in Gaelic football and hurling, but interested in sport in general, he has been just phenomenal. And mark my words, I feel like one day, maybe in 60, 78 years or 100 years time, there will be a statue after him, and maybe that statue will be there before that, I don't know, but I feel like there will be a statue outside Crow Park of Stephen Cluxton one day, mark my words. And what a year he had, I mean look, listen, there could have been multiple people who got the Footballer of the Year. Uh, Con O'Callaghan, of course, had a fantastic year for Dublin. Paul Mannion was fantastic. Dean Rock is fantastic. Of course, you cannot take away from the work that Kerry did as well. I mean, David Clifford had you know his breakout year. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit more about David Clifford actually later in this video. But David Clifford in general, you know, he had a fantastic year. He really broke out. You look at some of his performances in that match versus Mayo, in that game versus Dublin, he was outstanding. I doubt David Clifford's physicality a lot this year because I just didn't really feel like he was quite there. You know, he's still young, he's still a young player. I just didn't feel like he was quite at that level physically to be able to shake off the likes of you know some of the Dublin defenders. Uh, I feel like David Moore had a great year as well. I remember his performance against Donegal. I thought he was absolutely outstanding. Um, and, and in general, I feel like Kerry had a very good year. Stephen O'Brien, of course, as well. Um, but I do feel like ultimately Stephen Cluxton deserved this reward, not just for this year, but I feel like for what he's done in Gaelic football, throughout all the years, and I feel like this year in particular, I mean, that save in the replay versus Kerry was just absolutely unbelievable. Of course, there are talks that he could be retiring, which would be a huge loss for Dublin. I feel like he's probably the one player that maybe Dublin cannot replace. I know, obviously, Dublin have the other, have Evan Comerford coming up uh, through the ranks, so maybe he could, uh, you know, fill in that place for Stephen Cluxton, but I just feel like Stephen Cluxton He's just, he's such a leader as well. He's the captain of this team. He sets the example for this Dublin side, um, in my opinion. And I feel like him retiring would be a huge loss. And of course, the hurler of the year, that went to Seamus Callanan. 
Um, yeah, I mean, what can you say about this guy? What a year this guy had. I mean, he scored seven goals in seven games in the championship this year. He was just absolutely outstanding. He epithetized everything. Is that even a word? I don't, I don't even know if that's a word. But anyway, he, you know, he, he was everything about this Tipperary team this year. I mean, he was absolutely outstanding. Um, you know, his goals, the way he dropped into the half forward line at times to pick up the ball, he'd really, you know, help out with the play. Um, in, in many ways, he'd bring others into the game, and of course, he was always in the right moments at the right time to really capitalize when Tipperary most needed him. Um, he's just been simply outstanding, especially in that All Ireland final. He made a huge difference with his goal in that game, and he's just made a huge difference throughout the whole entire year. Um, I felt like you could have gave it to a, numerous players in the Tipperary side. I feel like personally, I probably would have actually gone with Noel McGrath. I just feel like uh, his story of, of, of coming up through, you know, what he battled with in the past with, um, you know, suffering from cancer. I think it's a phenomenal story to come back from that. And obviously, the year he had this year was just absolutely outstanding. I mean, you look back in that game versus Cork, he just dominated the midfield. You know, he, he set the press in many ways his intensity, his character, um, his point taking, and his physical ability to, to shrug others off the ball at times was just um, second to none in many ways. Against Wexford as well, he made a huge difference in that game when Tipperary looked beaten, when they had to really fight from behind, he made the key difference. And I feel like between Noel McGrath and Seamus Callanan, you could have went between either two. I feel like I would have went with Noel McGrath in my opinion, but Seamus Callanan, you cannot doubt the year that this man had. Of course, there were a few others on the list. Patrick Horgan had a fantastic year for Cork. He was absolutely outstanding. He hit 310 in that game versus Kilkenny, and you wonder if Cork have gotten past Kilkenny, you know, how well would have Cork done this year? How far would they have went? Patrick Horgan could have easily been a nomination for, for a hurler of the year. I feel like you could even say the same in football about Michael Murphy, another similar situation because Cork went out in the quarterfinals and obviously because Donegal went out um, in the Super 8s. It meant that those two players were never really gonna be considered for the uh, the awards. Lee Chin, of course, of Wexford had a very good year. I thought he was fantastic. What a game he played in that um, Leinster final versus Kilkenny. It was absolutely outstanding, dominated the game. Uh, 151 in the championship and um, just unbelievable from from Lee Chin really solid player great free kick taker um, and he was outstanding of course TJ Reid you can't doubt him as well his ability um, he stood up massively in some big games particularly in that Lancer championship he was a huge outlet for Kilkenny for the long ball um, and at times he was just very hard to mark he's one of the most difficult players to deal with in hurling in the sport in total and yeah, it'll be very interested to see how he does next year, of course, but TJ Reid, very unlucky to miss out, very solid player. Um, the Ballyhale man was unbelievable for Brian Cody in many ways this year. I think he hit 572 in total this year, so that just goes to show how good this man really is. But unfortunately, um, yeah, I mean, the fact that Tipperary won the All-Ireland and the fact that TJ Reid uh, probably didn't have his best game in that All-Ireland final meant that unfortunately he just had to miss out. And what about David Clifford? What a year this guy has had. I mean, not only has he had a breakout year with Kerry um, in the All-Ireland scene, you know, where he was absolutely outstanding going back to that All-Ireland semi-final versus Tyrone. And of course, even those two All-Ireland final clashes with Dublin. But the guy, you know, the young lad has now gone and won himself a county club title with uh, East Kerry. They win their first club title for, you know, the first time in 20 years that they have actually gone ahead and done this. And Clifford uh, was fantastic throughout this game. You know, I didn't see the game, but I did see the highlights. And David Clifford, outstanding, took his goal really well. Three points as well, one from a free. And David Clifford, um, you know, there's no doubt in my mind that we are looking at one of the potential greats in Gaelic football, you know, uh, to have the skill and ability that he has at such a young age um, is, is, is quite remarkable. We all seen what he did uh, at underage level, at minor level, uh, how good he was. And, and the question is, can he reach that ability at senior level? And to be, to, to be honest with you, he is looking really good at the moment. I mean, in that, you know, Dublin couldn't get near him in either game, really. In the second game, Kerry faded out quite massively in the second half. We all know about that. We don't have to get too much into the details of that again. But David Clifford, ultimately, 
Uh, he is a player for the future and, and guiding East Kerry to that 10 point victory over Dr. Croaks. A huge win for East Kerry to get that win. Of course, there were some points in there from Jack Sherwood, Mike Foley, uh, Dara Roche looked very good, Evan Cronin as well. Um, so all in all, very impressive from, uh, from, from East Kerry. Dr. Croaks, unfortunately, missing out. Tony Brosnan, probably the standout player for them, but ultimately, great win for East Kerry. Coro Finn, meanwhile, they were victorious again. Of course, we know how good this side is, winning the All-Ireland Club title last year, and they've you know put themselves in a fantastic position to do so, potentially again, at least in the um, you know Leinster or in the Connacht Provincials because they've gone ahead and beaten Ballantubber by a point. Huge victory, of course, for Corofin. Liam Silk with a goal and a point. Um, huge result for Corofin, and uh, you know they remain, of course, the heavy favourites to go ahead and win the All Ireland Club title. Hopefully, St. Edmunds can give them a go, but who knows? Uh, I feel like Corofin are looking very good at the moment. There was also a win, of course, for Podrick Pierce's, who I would be keeping a very close eye on. Of course, let's not forget Podrick Pierce's winning the Roscommon Senior title. Um, you know, a huge occasion. I think it was their first time they ever won it. They went ahead and, you know, they comfortably obviously beat uh, Conal Gales of oh, London. Uh, they beat them very comfortably, uh, 210 to 8 points in the end. So it'll be very interesting to see how Podrick Pierce's get on against Carl Finn. Um, of course, Carl Finn, you would expect to probably win that game, but Podrick Pierce is at the moment of Ross Common looking very, very bright. Of course, Bally Bowden St. Enders, they got a victory over Newtown Blues. They won by 111 to 6 points. Um, yeah, I mean, it was a, a 111 to 5 points. It was close throughout, to be fair. Uh, Newtown Blues gave Bally Bowden St. Enders quite a good game throughout this match. It was fairly close up until the you know absolute closing stages. It was actually only until the final 15 minutes when um, St. Enders actually started to pull away. Um, now St. Enders, they're not my club, um, you know, but fair play to them for obviously, you know, winning that Leinster club, uh, or the, sorry, the Dublin Senior Club title. Um, and, and yeah, a big result obviously over this loud side. Um, and, and, and fair play to them, you know, very impressed by Conal Keeney. You know, he's, he's still there, he's still uh, chipping away at it. Fair play to him. Uh, Warren Egan looked bright, of course, Ryan Baskell getting a couple of points, Colin Baskell as well. So good result all around for St. Enders. I'm not too sure if they will go all the way in the, the Leinster Club Championship, but certainly that was um, a good result for them. There were, of course, some other results. I'm not gonna lie, lads, I'm certainly not an expert when it comes to these club sides. But um, yeah, of course, there was a win for, uh, for Port Leash who beat uh, St. Patrick's of, of Wicklow on penalties. Of course, that was a bit controversial as well. The uh, St. Patrick's manager was coming out and saying that it was a really harsh way to, to, to lose a Gaelic football match. And yeah, yeah, I mean, I feel like they probably should have played a replay. I think the only reason why they went they went to penalties on this one um, was because of, of you know, the, it's such a tight schedule to fit all these matches in. We've seen with the GEA in the past with some of the club games where they're trying to accommodate them. You know, into next year when you've got the uh, you know the, the national league taking place. So. Um, I, I can understand that. Of course, they're moving on to some of the other matches. Gary Castle, good win for them over Ratout. A um, bit of a backstory, of course, into that, and, and, and always great to see, um, you know, a bit of drama and a bit of uh, a bit of a story behind that. Gary Castle, very well deserved of that. Aerog of Carlo, that's a bit of a surprise to see them beating Sarsfields. Not gonna lie, I have no idea about either of them too, but. Good result for, for the side from Carlo. You'd expect the side from Kildare to, to win that, but you know, then again, it shows kind of Carlo rising and how well they're doing. Of course, moving down to some of the other results, the Munster Club Senior Football Championship. Good result, of course, for Nemo Rangers getting past Newcastle West by three points. Nemo Rangers always there, thereabouts in Cork, and of course, uh, for them to get that result shows them in, in, a, in a quite a positive light overall. But ultimately, lads, I am going to go ahead and end this video here. Do let me know down in the comments below. Um, yeah, you know what you guys want me to talk about coming up in the next video. Is there any new stories maybe I haven't covered, you know, going back since, uh, you know, October. Maybe we could cover them in the next video. I've absolutely no problem about it. But ultimately, lads, yeah, you know, I'm going to try do this every week from now on. I'm going to make a commitment to myself that during weekdays I'm gonna sit down and we're gonna make this video um, about the latest GEA news. We're gonna stay out of the pub, we can do it together, we can make the video, and ultimately lads, but yeah lads, this is gonna be the end of the video. My name is Aaron, I'll catch you all next time.